Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, today we will continue talking about trigonometry, solving trigonometric problems. And this is lecture number eight in the trigonometry category. Okay, so um, the whole course, which I called Math Plus and Problems, is the um, continuation of the more theoretical course called Math for Teens. All courses are presented on unisor.com, totally free website, no advertisement, even sign-in is optional. Um, now, there is also course Physics for Teens on the same website, and Relativity for All. Um, now, uh, it's very important to solve problems which have certain, um, which need certain uh, degree of ingenuity, if I can say so. Um, because, again, the whole purpose of solving problems uh, in mathematics is not really to give you the skills to solve these problems in real life, which probably never happens. I mean, it does happen, but, but with a few people. Most likely, the problems you will be facing in real life will be completely different. And uh, most of them will be, well, certain problems which nobody solved before, so you have to come up with something new. And that's basically the purpose of uh, whatever we are doing here, because mathematics uh, presents you a broad spectrum of different problems where different ideas actually need it. And uh, even if the problem was solved by somebody else, but you don't know how it was solved, you have to come up with your own solution. So what, what, what I basically suggest you to do is um, whatever the problem I present, uh, I present it in two versions, basically the video version as I'm doing this lecture, and there is also on the same website, just on the same page basically, where you can find the video, uh, you can find the textual description of all these problems. So in either way, first familiarize yourself with the problem and try to solve it yourself. Now if you are watching this uh, the first time on, on the video, just pause the video as soon as I present the problem and think about it. What's important is to think about how can you approach the problem. Even if you don't solve it, that's fine. You can listen to my solution or you can read it in, in uh, the corresponding notes for the lecture on unisor.com. But what's important is to spend time and to think about it. Thinking is the process which trains your brain in as much as physical exercises train your mass muscles. Okay, so let's continue training the brain. Uh, the problem number one, you have to prove, prove that cosine of 36 degree is greater or equal to tangent of 36 degree. Okay, so again, that's the proper place to pause the video and think about it. Now, what I am proposing right now is, first, um, let's just uh, uh, think about these two functions, cosine and tangent, um, somewhere in the vicinity of 36 degrees. Well, 36 degrees between 0 and 90. So, um, if this is your 90 degree is pi over 2, and as we remember, cosine is equal to 1 at 0, and then goes to 0 at pi over 2. That's the cosine. Tangent starts from 0 and goes to infinity near the pi over 2, because tangent is sine divided by cosine. And since cosine at pi over 2 is 0, the tangent goes to uh, infinity. So, up, and up until this point where they cross, from 0 to this point, let's call it x, cosine is greater than tangent. And 36 is somewhere here, basically, right? 36 is... Uh, pi over 2 is 90, 36 is just a little bit more than one third of it. So it, it, it's about here, 36 degrees. So, it looks like cosine should be greater. 
so it looks like it's correct basically kind of uh, assumption well obviously it's not a proof to prove that this is really the case we have to prove that x where they cross these two graphs is greater than 36 or 36 degrees greater than is less than than point of in, in, in intersection so what I'm suggesting as a solution just let's find the point of intersection so let's solve the equation in this interval from 0 to pi over 2 from 0 to 90 degrees and if the solution would be greater than 36 degree greater than whatever 36 degrees uh, pi over 5 pi is 180 degree divided by 5 would be 36 so if my solution x of this equation would be greater than five, pi over 5 then ab obviously this inequality would be proven all right so let's solve it how can we solve it well obviously since tangent is sine of x divided by cosine of x right cosine we will uh, combine with this cosine we will have cosine square x equals to sine x right well cosine is 1 minus sine square so we have this equation now obviously we should solve if I will just assign sine x of some new variable t this is a quadratic equation for t so I will put everything to the right we will have sine square which is t square plus t and minus 1 equals to 0 okay solution to this <coughs> t is equal first and second 2 minus 1 plus minus square root of 1 square um, minus so it's a plus 4 okay now we are interested in positive solution which is this one so it's plus so we will have t is equal to without t is sine of x right is equal to square root of 5 minus 1 square root of 5 minus 1 divided by 2 now in notes for this lecture I actually calculate it and give it as a hint that this value is 0 0.666 I calculated it now 36 degree which is pi over uh, 5 this is in decimal 0 0.628 so this is less than this so this point is to the left of this which means cosine is greater than tangent so we were using the principle that at zero cosine is greater than tangent cosine is one tangent is zero cosine is monotonically uh, decreasing function and tangent is monotonically increasing function these are topics which I have covered a long time ago in the course mass for teens in the, the theoretical course where I basically present the functions cosine and tangent and how they behave basically their, their graphs so all this I consider as given so practical implementation of that knowledge is solution to this mm, problem okay so that's the proof next problem I have three problems for today next is to solve an equation a sine square plus b sine x cosine x plus c cosine square x equals d where a b c and d some real numbers okay so it's quite general equation now what's interesting about this well interesting that this has the same well degree if you wish sine square here is sine and cosine which is also like two components 
and cosine is also square. So it's all second degree equations, so to speak. Now, but this is something which really uh, distorts the picture. I mean, if it was zero on the right, I would just divide everything by cosine square, and I will have sine square divided by, co by cosine square, which is tangent. I would have here sine times cosine divided by cosine square would be sine divided by cosine tangent again. And this will be just constant c. So I would have tangent squared, tangent, and uh, constant. And that would be a square uh, quadra qu quadratic equation for tangent. So I solve it and then do arc tangent. Simple. But this d actually distorts the picture. How can I correct it? Well, very simply. Since sine square of x plus cosine square of x is always equal to 1, I can also multiply it by d, and I will have d here. So if I will replace d with this, I will have the same uniform uh, equation where I have only squares second degree sine, or sine times cosine, cosine square, sine square again and cosine square. Divide by cosine square and that will have e equation for tangent. Okay? All right, so let's do it. So we will have, now if I will replace d with this, and I will put everything to the left, I will have a minus d sine square of x plus b sine x cosine x plus c minus d cosine square x equals to zero. Now I have it equals to zero, and that what helps me right now, we divide everything by cosine square. Hopefully cosine is not equal to zero, we have to really separately uh, consider that case. What if cosine square is equal to uh, zero, which means cosine is equal to zero, which means x is equal to uh, pi over 2 uh, plus pk, right? So that's a separate issue. Before dividing it everything by cosine square, we might lose these particular um, uh, uh, solution. Now, if cosine square is equal to 0, that means that sine is supposed to be equal to 0, right? Well, hopefully a minus d not equal to 0. Let's just put this as a condition. a not equal to d as a condition of this problem, okay? That's just easier. Now, if a is not equal to d, then sine square would be equal to zero if cosine equals to zero, but that cannot be at the same time because sine square, sine and cosine at the same time cannot be equal to zero because some of their squares is supposed to be equal to one, right? So we do not lose any solutions. That's what I'm going This is not a solution. That's fine, no problem. So we can divide by cosine square, and what do we have? We have a minus d tangent square of x plus b tangent x, right? If we divide by cosine square, this will be tangent square, this will be just tangent, and this will be just a constant. And this is the quadratic equation for tangent. So we have to solve it for tangent, which means tangent x would be equal to what? 2b, uh, sorry, 2a minus g. Minus b plus minus square root b square minus 4a minus d c minus b. Well, obviously, depending on various a, b, c, and g, you will have different solutions. Now, the real solution would be, uh, obviously, arc tangent of x is equal to this, plus pk, because the tangent is periodic function. So we have arc, arc tangent of this, It's already two solutions, by the way. 
So we have two solutions plus pk, where k is any integer number because of periodicity of tangent. And we have all the solutions now. Well, obviously, infinite number of solutions because of periodicity. OK, so that's it for the second problem. And the third problem, again, don't forget to pause the video and think about as soon as I present the problem. OK, now we are dealing with a system of two trigonometric equations. Tangent x times tangent y is equal to 3 and sine x times sine y equals 2 3 quarters. So this is the system of equation to solve. OK, again, pause the video, think about this. Now, here is the plan. Since I have tangent and tangent, which means sine over cosine, and again sine over cosine, so in the numerator I will have sine times sine, which I already know. So I can uh, derive the uh, denominator, which is cosine times cosine. So I have sine times sine, and I have cosine times cosine. And this reminds me cosine of sum and cosine of difference of two angles. And I think I will significantly simplify the system if I will do it this way. I will have cosine from the sum and cosine from the, from, from, from the difference. All right, so from the first equation, I can see that this is sine x times sine x divided by cosine x cosine x. That's tangent by tangent, right? This is tangent and this is tangent. And this is 3. But at the same time, if I will use, instead of sine times sine, I will use this. I will have 3 quarters divided by cosine x cosine y, from which I can derive cosine x times cosine y is equal to what? 1 quarter. Now, Now, these two seems to be a little easier than these two. Why? For a very simple reason. If I will subtract it, I will have cosine x times cosine y minus sine times psi, which is cosine of x plus y. That would be 1 quarter minus 3 quarters, which is minus 1 half. If I will add them, I will have formula for cosine of difference. And that would be 3 quarters plus 1 quarter, which is 1. Now, this is, again, simpler than this. Why? Well, for very simple reason. From here, I can get x plus y is equal to. From this, I will have x minus y equals 2. And then, from this, I can very easily derive x and y by, again, summing and, uh, and uh, uh, subtracting. OK, so let's do it. So this is done. And this is done. So I have this very simple system. So what is my, if cosine is equal to minus 1 half? Well, let's just think about it. This is the unit circle. Now. Uh, cosine is abscissa and sine is ordinate. That's sine. Now, cosine is equal to minus one half. Well, if it's 60 degree, then this would be, and this is 30, so this is half of the this, which means one half. But we need minus one half, so it's symmetrical here. So this is 60. And symmetrical here, which is this 60. Because in both cases, my cosine is equal to minus one half. 
So, what is it? Now, if this is 60, that means it's pi minus uh, pi over 3, which is 2 thirds. So it's 2 pi over 3. That's this point. And this point would be minus 2 pi over 3. So, from this equation, I will see that the x plus y is e equal to uh, either plus uh, 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi m 2 pi m because 2 pi is a period, right? And uh, another is x plus y is equal to minus 2 pi over 3 plus 2 2 pi m. So these are two solutions. Now from this, from the second equation, when the cosine is equal to 1? Well, uh, here, it's 0, right? This is the cosine, so it's 0. And there is no symmetrical point, it's only one point. So it's always 0 plus 2 pi, I will use different number, n. It's m and this is n, any integer number. And in this case, I will have exactly the same, 2 pi n. So we have two systems, which gives me two different solutions. So let's just see what kind of solutions I have. <coughs> if I will add them together, I will have 2x, y will cancel out, and I will have this one. And I will uh, factor out 2, I will cancel 2. This is 2x, and this is 2, 2, and 2, right? So I will have x is equal to pi over 3 plus pi m plus n. Now y is equal to, if I will subtract it, x will cancel out, we will have 2y would be m minus, so it's pi over 3, 3 plus pi m minus n, right? So these are a pair of solutions for the first system. The second system will give me something very close. x is equal to minus pi over 3 plus pi m plus n and y is equal to minus pi over 3 plus pi of m minus n. So, that's it. Now, now we have to talk. Well, there are two different topics to talk. Well, first of all, in the original equation, we had tangent x times tangent y is equal to 3. Now, obviously, tangent must exist, which means cosine x should not be equal to 0, and cosine y should not be equal to 0. Now, which means x is not equal to when the cosine is equal to uh, zero here this and this so it's pi over two two not three plus pi k same thing with y but our solutions are these and these not these two points right so we can never hit these points, so everything is fine. Both solutions are okay. They do not make cosine of x or y to be equal to zero. So these are real solutions. So whatever we were doing, maybe not always like kosher, but still, I mean, whenever we are inverting, multiplying something, that always should be done with, with, care, with care. So we did not lose anything, we did not uh, add anything. So that's very important. Now, another important issue is, look, I have two different integer numbers, m and n, which, uh, and, and I'm saying they can be like any number. Well, can I just replace them with 1? So instead of saying m plus n and then minus m, I can put, let's say, k and l. 
Well, not necessarily. I mean, that's not always possible because if we will put it k and l, I still would like to return. I mean, obviously, from m minus plus n equals k and m minus n equals to l, I can always derive m and n. Why? Again, I will add them together. 2m is equal to k plus l. 2n is equal to k minus l, right? If I will add them and cancel out, I would have k and l. And if I will subtract, I will have this. But, look, this is even numbers. This is not necessarily, if k and l are any numbers, they might not actually be even number if I will add them together. So if both are even or both are odd, that's fine. But if one of them is even and another is odd, I will not get this. So I cannot really replace m plus n and, and m minus n with any, anything like k and l, whatever it is. Because that's not necessarily a combined solution. We need a combined solution. So both x and y fit the, um, the equation. So I would not really go into this and replace it because we might actually get some problems in the beginning. It's better to leave it as this because in any case we are dependent on two integer which can can take any value basically, right? So that, that that's sufficient and there is no purpose to replace two integers with other two integers and think about what kind of problems might actually exist. So forget about this, we don't really need it. It's quite fine to leave these two uh, equations as this, specifying basically where m and n are any integer numbers. As soon as you fix m and n, you have one solution and you have another solution. For a different pair of m and n, you have different solutions, one and another. So there are obviously infinite number of solutions, and all of them can be obtained by uh, changing m and n among all integer numbers. Well, that's it. So what I suggest you to do, and it's very important actually, I'm very serious about this, go to the website unizor.com, go to the Mass Plus and Problems course, find trigonometry, and uh, go to Trigonometry 08 lecture. Now it has all these problems presented on basically on the screen. You can read it. There are hints in some cases, and in some cases I might actually put the entire solution but don't pay attention to them for a while. Just think about the problem yourself and try to recreate the problem. Not only you recreate the problem on some kind of a piece of paper, no, have a good notebook and write the solution to this problem in as many words as you can. Basically, trying to um, explain it as, uh, as, as I'm explaining, for instance, to you, you try to explain it to somebody else on the piece of paper first. Because whenever you are writing your, your thought on the paper, it gives you much more clarity and much more like logical foundation to what you're doing. So try, try not to uh, put anything which is not really uh, directly dependent on whatever you have alre already written. So your logic would be without any um, gaps in between. So all things must be really done properly and what's important, don't write just one formula after another formula. Try to put some real words in whatever language you are using which explains actually, like you're explaining to somebody else the solution to this problem. Like this is because of that, not just, you know, have the final result on the on the piece of paper, thinking that I've, uh, the things are obvious. It's not. Nothing is obvious actually. But the more logic you put into your textual uh, explanation of your own solution, uh, the better you will be off. You will discipline your mind, and you will be much sharper. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.